Are leaves from the plantain plant a remedy for venomous snake bites and scorpion stings? Are you at risk of catching leptospirosis when drinking from a tin can? Is the government secretly injecting vaccines into meat, causing magnetism? And did Russian President Vladimir Putin wish former South African President Jacob Zuma a happy birthday? Welcome to this episode of What's Crap on WhatsApp the voice note show that investigates the crap shared in your WhatsApp groups. I'm Anisua May from podcasting company, Volume. And I'm Taryn Corey from Africa Check, the continent's leading fact-checking organization. Let's get to it. So Taryn, what's first on our list this Friday? A claim doing the rounds on social media says that plantain leaves can neutralize the poison from a snake or scorpion sting. Hmm. I see it says people should squeeze the juices out of the leaves and drink it, that the poison can die. This can't be true. It's not. But let's break it down. Plantains are a tropical fruit plant. Some studies have found that both the fruit and leaves of the plantain plant have various medicinal and nutritional benefits. But we also know from experts that the only specific therapies for snake bites are antivenom. Antivenom is a treatment which counters the effects of venom, the poison that a creature such as a snake or spider puts into its victim when it bites or stings. However, antivenoms are often not readily available when people are bitten by snakes, particularly in underdeveloped regions of the world. But there's no specific evidence for plant-based antivenom, right? That's right. A 2016 study looked specifically at scorpion stings, and found that because scorpion venom is toxic, antivenoms are a necessity. And much like in the case of snake bites, the study warns that using traditional herbal remedies may delay medical treatment, causing more harm than good. Antivenoms need to be administered early to remove the venom as soon as possible, it says. The claim is crap. Next up is a message warning readers to rinse the parts evenly on all soda cans before drinking from them. According to the message, a study shows that the top of all beverage cans are more contaminated than public toilets. Ew. It also says that you can catch the infectious disease leptospirosis from them. This is because mice urinate on the cans. Leptospirosis is caused by leptospira bacteria and can lead to potentially fatal infections of a number of organs, including the kidney, liver, and brain. It is passed from animals to humans. According to the World Health Organization, the disease is found mainly where humans come into contact with the urine of infected animals or a urine-polluted environment. Okay, so since we all enjoy a can of Coke, we need to know if this is true. Thankfully, it's not. There is evidence that mice can carry infectious diseases like leptospirosis and can spread it to humans who have direct contact with an infected mouse's urine or other body fluids. But leptospira survive in moist environments, so would not typically survive on the sealed, dry surface of a tin can. Transmission might be possible if the can's top was crusted with rat urine, but a 2009 report published in the India Journal of Microbiology says the likelihood of this is statistically low. The U.S.-based Centers for Disease Control and Prevention identifies swimming, wading, kayaking, and rafting in contaminated lakes and rivers as activities where the risk of exposure to leptospirosis is high. The claim is crap. Next up is a video with over a whopping 28 million views. In the video, the person recording walks towards the meat aisle in a shopping center. The text in the video reads, Walmart in Estero, Florida, magnet test. The person sticks what appears to be a small round magnet on a pack of steaks. The video alludes to the viral and widely debunked claim that mRNA vaccines are being injected into food supplies. This again? I know this is not true, but let's break down the facts. In 2021, Africa Check debunked the claim that coronavirus vaccines can make you magnetic. We explained that for metal objects to be able to stick to a vaccination site, the ingredients of the vaccine would have to have a metal base. They don't. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, 
has previously said that there are no metal in these vaccines. And although there is no evidence that mRNA vaccines have found their way into meat or other food supplies, livestock do receive specific vaccines to prevent disease. But eating an animal that has been vaccinated does not have any effect on immunity against the same disease. This claim is also crap. Last up for today is an image posted on social media which claims to show Russian President Vladimir Putin wishing former South African President Jacob Zuma happy birthday in an announcement on live TV. The image was viewed nearly 36,000 times, but upon closer inspection, it is clearly fake. Here's why. Jacob Zuma, President of South Africa from 2009 to 2018, has had a long relationship with Putin and Russia. Recently, amid the continuing Russia-Ukraine conflict, Zuma reportedly called Putin a man of peace. Under Zuma's presidency, South Africa and Russia became part of what is known as the BRICS group of countries, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. But despite these links, there is no evidence the Russian president congratulated Zuma on live TV on his 81st birthday on 12 April 2023, as the image suggests. The first red flag is in the image itself. It is formatted to look like a screenshot from a live TV news address by Putin. It features an apparent breaking news strapline including language errors that should be cause for concern. We used a reverse image search to find out more about this image, which revealed many instances of the same photograph of Putin, but without the news headline banner at the bottom of the image. Navigating to some of these sites revealed that the photos came from an address Putin gave in February 2022. He did not mention Zuma in this address or wish him happy birthday. That's all the time we have for today. Now you know what's crap and what's not. Your friends and family can sign up for our show over WhatsApp. The number is 082-709-3527. Make sure to save us as a contact in your phone and send us a message. You can find the show wherever you get your podcasts, from Apple to Spotify. If you listen there, you'll find show notes and a link to the fact checks. Remember that you can send us a WhatsApp message, a picture, video, link, or voice note that you need fact-checked. Just forward them to us on WhatsApp. Our theme song is composed by John Bartman. I'm Andesua May. And I'm Taryn Curry. Bye for now. Volume.